saw the huge dark smokes very far. shift in the, the wind. Fire shifted direction. Here's the latest on the Fort McMurray fire. It's desert. oil in the sand, so if that site caught on fire, disaster. Even the downtown core is I got all fire. the text messages and missed calls from my son. Right on my PJs, I went in the car, pick him up. Look, it's falling fire! Yeah, the whole forest is on fire. My son is taking a video because I'm driving. I'm freaking out right now! There is 88,000 people that took that road. There is no other way out. Where is the walking dead apocalypse? And it's super hot. I said to my son, don't you ever open that windows because he have asthma. What if he will get an asthma attack? The only thing you can think to save your life, to save your loved ones. In a split second, your life will change from a normal life to you never know. Life in Fort McMurray was good. <laughs> there were so many things happening so fast. There was uh, jobs to be had and opportunity just knocking. Everywhere else in the world, they're not making any money, they're broke. But in Canada, we have this place, this gold mine. If you fucked around before and you weren't doing things right, come change your life, come make your life better. Fort McMurray will give you the money to do that. <laughs> We're making more money than some doctors, some lawyers, some nurses, some even mayors. I just finished two nights and I have four night shifts to go. I'm a heavy equipment operator. I drive big trucks, a two-story size of truck. The biggest truck in the world. And I love it. <laughs> and I came as a nanny to Canada. As many Filipino women, I had to work abroad as a nanny. I left my son when he was only two years old. I didn't see my son for four years. Then I went home. He couldn't recognize me. He couldn't even say mommy or anything. He is just staring at me. One time, you know, during my holiday, he started calling me mom, mommy, mommy. And I'm so happy and I, I, I cried so hard, like living. A two-year-old kid is not really a good thing. Things were going busy, busy, busy. People had no time to really check themselves or what was really important because there was so much money to be made. Who gave us the right to become millionaire and destroying our environment? I understand the conflict, but um, it's, I think it's a part of life. At this time, there's going to be a lot of questions. At this time, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty. Some kids have gone through the fire, literally. They felt the fire trying to engulf them. They saw it. And they can't get those images out of their minds. Talk about it. Don't bury it down. Don't act as if there's nothing. Don't act as if it's not hurting. It's not painful. I lost our house. I lost all my musical instruments. Everything is gone. We didn't get anything. My only concern is they are saying welcome home. But where is home? Let's go. 
kind of sad, like, to see all the people that they're they're going through all the yeah. in the basements and yeah, they don't perfect. they don't find nothing. Nobody is living here right now. It's all been secluded. We're allowed to come up every day if we would like to look at our homes to get any belongings out that we would like. This Maya is coming up here on the left. By God's grace, it did not catch fire. A lot of ash and fire came over from the forest and came over and dumped on our front porch. Everything burned, like fiberglasses, boats, snowmobiles, cars, chemicals. Some people are just not returning at this point. They're just taking their health uh, considerations first. What if it's polluted? What if it's not safe, you know, to come back to the house? Now I'm going alone because I'm worried about my son. Oh yeah, shit, you know, so much pollution. We made so much money and it's polluted. And now I think the modern nature is super angry that she have to like punish us something like that but it's just kind of like my simple thought you know in my mind I can smell gas. Okay, you can smell gas? Yes. I don't exactly know if it's from our house or from the other house, but I'm getting paranoid because he just turned on our gas. It's devastating. Oh, I don't, I don't even know where are those people right now. Where do they live right now? Like, I'm seeing all of this. It's pretty upsetting. So many people that lost their houses, all their investments. So I don't really know after that fire what's going to happen. It is the Lord of heaven himself who sustains us. Therefore, we will arise and rebuild. It's not because of karma. It's not because of this and that. It's, it's because it's... It's summer and it's warm up there and it's a forest fire that happen every year. Natural calamity, you know, it's after winter, now it's going summer. We can't really tell when it's gonna happen. It's the forest fire every year, it happens every year. Our house is still standing, our vehicle is still here, our family is still here. This is my town, this is my home. You know, life must go on. For the longest time, I couldn't look at it. I was in denial about climate change for longer than I care to admit. Told myself the science was too complex, that the environmentalists were dealing with it, that it wasn't my issue. 